welcome. Let's take a look at Newton's method. Newton's method is a technique for finding, or at best approximating, the roots or zeros of a function f of x. Over here on the right, we have a graph of a function f of x. And our goal here is to approximate the roots or the zeros of that function. Now graphically, that means we're trying to approximate the x value at which the function crosses the x-axis, or where f of x equals zero. So with that in mind, we're going to use tangent lines to the curve to help us approximate or find that root or zero. And so this process begins with an initial guess. In this case, six looks like our initial guess, but that initial guess we're going to call x naught. And so with that initial guess, there is a corresponding point on the graph of the function itself that corresponds to an input value of f of x naught and an output value of f of x naught. Now, let's consider the tangent line to the curve um, as exhibited by, the left half is exhibited by that ray, but the right half you can imagine continuing on this way. So the tangent line to that curve at the point x naught f of x naught would be y equals f prime at x naught times x minus x naught plus f at x naught. Now, realize that we want to know uh, where this curve crosses the x-axis. So rather, rather than go right to finding the zero of the original function, we're going to find the zeros of these tangent lines. And the zeros of these tangent lines are going to then approximate and get closer and closer to the zero of the actual function. So because we want the zero of this tangent line, that means that the y value for this tangent line should be zero. We want it to cross the x-axis. So we have f zero equals f prime at x naught times x minus x naught plus f of x naught. And we want to know the x value that causes this relationship to be true. Now, you may be seeing a lot of symbols there, but keep in mind that x naught is a, a concrete real number value. So this f prime at x naught is a number. Um, this x naught is also a number. And this f prime at x naught will also be a number. So really the only variable in this equation is the x, and that x corresponds to where this tangent line crosses the x-axis. So let's go ahead and solve this equation for the x at which the tangent line will cross the x-axis. So to find the uh, x value for which the tangent line crosses the x-axis, we will need to solve this equation for x. And in doing that, we need to subtract f of x naught from both sides of the equation. So we end up with the negative of f of x naught equals f prime of x naught times x minus x naught. Next, let's divide by this coefficient, this f prime of x naught, on both sides of the equation. And now we end up with um, x minus x naught equals negative f of x naught over f prime of x naught. Now to finish solving for x, we will add x naught to both sides of this equation. 
and we get x naught minus f at x naught over f prime at x naught equals x. And so this location here becomes our next approximation for the true value of the zero of the function. And we'll call this x1 because it is our next approximation and our first approximation we called x0 or x sub 0. So x1 equals x sub 0 minus f at x sub 0 over f prime at x sub 0. So now we're going to use uh, this x value to create a new tangent line. So having created uh, the first tangent line to the curve in order to approximate our true so zero of the function, we have our first approximation x1 and so now what we want to do is create our second approximation and so we will be creating the tangent line to the curve at x1 comma f at x1. And uh, following the process we had before in our previous uh, approximation, our tangent line will be y equals f prime at x1 times x minus x1 plus f at x1. And keep in mind we're trying to find that x-intercept, that zero of the function. And so this y value should be zero. So with this equation, let's go ahead and subtract f of x1 to the left and the right hand sides of the equation. So we end up with f, negative f of x1 equals f prime at x1 uh, times x minus x1. Then we divide by the derivative at x1 on the left and on the right. So we get f, negative f of x1 divided by f prime at x1 equals x minus x1. And again, we're after this x-intercept, so we add x to both sides of the equation. I'm sorry, x1 to both sides of the equation. So x1 uh, minus f at x1 over f prime at x1 should be our x-intercept. So our next approximation to our x-intercept value or our root or our zero is we now have x2 our second approximation in this chain um, as being equal to x1 minus f at x1 over f prime at x1. So notice that in this process we are getting closer and closer to the true root or the true zero of the function. So now that we've gone through this process twice, let's think about what, how we might find our third approximation. So we have our second approximation to the root or zero of the function here in x2. And so we would be building our tangent line at x2 comma f at x2. But looking at and thinking, um, thinking about so looking at and thinking about how we came up with these first two approximations can help us come up with this third approximation that we'll call x three. So notice that um, in estimating or getting our first approximation, we used x0. And in creating our second approximation, we used x1. And so what do we think might happen 
if we created this third tangent line and um, solved for its x-intercept, well, hopefully you're going to say that x3 would be uh, based off our previous uh, estimate, our x2, so it would be x2 minus f at x2 over f prime at x2 because our tangent line would be built off this point x2 f of x2. And so we can continue this process. We can build a tangent line at x3 using the point x3 and f of x3 to find its intercept on the x-axis and that intercept would become our x4. So over here uh, I've kind of outlined what we've been doing. We were either given or we have a guess at our initial x value. In this case that initial x value was 6 but it could be any x value that seems reasonable and close enough. So then we built a tangent line and found the x-intercept for that tangent line. That gave us our first estimate. Then we built a second tangent line and found the x-intercept for that tangent line. That gave us our second estimate. Then we built a new tangent line and found its x-intercept. That gave us our third estimate. And then at our third estimate, we can build a new tangent line and find its x-intercept. And we can notice that that new x-intercept, that x four, sub 4, will be x sub 3 minus f at x sub 3 divided by f prime at x sub 3. And so we can just continue this process until we feel like we are close enough to that true uh, zero or root of the function. So let's just summarize the process here. So in summary, basically what we're trying to do is to find the roots of the function f of x. And just as a reminder, those are the solutions to the equation f of x equals zero. So in that process, we need to know what the function is and we need to know what its derivative is. You need an initial starting point. You can choose that initial starting point, x sub zero, or sometimes that is given to you. Then your first approximation is simply the x-intercept of the tangent line at that point, and we found that um, to be this point here. This was our x1. So you can directly compute it. You will know the values of, of x0. You, know, you will be able to determine what f of x0 is and what f prime of x0 is. And basically you just continue iterating on the process until you achieve the desired precision. That means until you get close enough to the root. And usually this is indicated by successive iterations being the same to a specified decimal place. So in part two of this video, we'll take a look at an example.